Welcome to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and Kaysen Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We are the largest grassroots advocacy network for people with mental illness and their family members, with over 800 national affiliates and 13 Kansas affiliates, with NAMI Wichita being one of those 13. We provide awareness, support, education, and advocacy for people affected by mental illness. Our purpose here is to provide a community conversation on KSUN Radio that gives insight into what it's like to live with a mental illness. Our intention and hope is that our program will change attitudes, assumptions, and stereotypes about people with mental health conditions, and in so doing, we will stop the stigma associated with mental illness. My name is David. I am very pleased and proud to be your host today, and I am a person living with mental illness. I am in recovery for major depressive disorder. Like everyone, I struggle with the ups and downs of emotions and the challenges of being fully human, but I am doing great, and I know I have many gifts to offer my family, my friends, and my community. Before I get too far into the program, I need to note that we talk about mental health issues on this program. There may be some issues or words that may be troubling or triggers for our listeners. Please practice good self-care and use your own discretion when listening. Now let me introduce Kara, my co-host and the executive producer for our program. Hello, Kara. Hello, David. And our technical producer, Maddie. Hello, Maddie. Hello. And now let me introduce our guest for today. It is my pleasure to introduce Leslie. Hello, Leslie. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Great. Well, let me start off with the question that I ask everyone, and that is, where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Valley Stream, New York. Okay, where is Valley Stream, New York? Uh, it's on Long Island. Okay, all right. And uh, what high school did you graduate from? Uh, Central High School. And what was their mascot? The Eagle. The Eagles. Okay, so <laughs> now we know something about Valley Stream uh, High School, right? Yes. All right. Um, well, what else can I ask you? Um, what is your diagnosis? Um I know I have depression. I don't think I was ever diagnosed with anything more specific than that. It's been a lifelong battle. Okay. And and when about were you diagnosed? Um, probably, I want to say 1974. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. Um, and uh, what were some of the circumstances surrounding that, that discovery? Well, I, uh, like everybody else, went and saw the movie The Exorcist. Uh -huh. And after that movie, I was a wreck. Within three days of seeing it, all I could do is cry. And um, so I went to see, my husband was in the military. I went to see the base chaplain. He suggested mental health. I went to mental health and went to therapy and, because I thought I was going crazy. And uh, he says, no, crazy people don't come in we bring them in people who need help come for help right so uh, I went to therapy and group therapy and found out I was pretty normal okay just sometimes have to battle the depression yes mm -hmm. fair enough and now you you battle that depression with um, with therapy with therapy but also um, when I begin to realize that I'm feeling down, I try to find things that make me happy. Okay. So you use some, some good personal talk therapy yes. and, and, and you, you reframe things so that you can focus on that. Correct. Okay. Those are, those are good terms, by the way. Uh, reframing is where you take a, a situation and you relook at it in, in a new way or a new light. And that helps you understand uh, that it's not as bad as what you may have thought it was like a uh, dialectical behavioral like dialectic li dialectic behavioral therapy yes exactly um very good kara <laughs> um i wasn't even making that connection but you were right um let's see what else can i ask you oh do you have any hobbies oh gosh hobbies yes my husband will say uh, my hobbies take over the house <laughs> um, that's good though i do rubber stamping and oh, awesome. So I make cards. Mm -hmm. um, I do embroidery uh, by hand and on machine. Um, Wonderful. I draw. I paint. Excellent. I do macrame. I do crochet. I do, you know, cruel. Anything that I can, 
And I've, I've seen some of your art, Leslie, and your art is, is fantastic. Thanks, Kara. That is wonderful. I, I'm looking at your sweater, by the way, and she has three Scotty dogs <laughs> on her sweater, which are just absolutely wonderful. I love that. Did you do that? I, I wish I could take credit for that now. Uh, oh, you didn't. <laughs> well, I was going to assume that you had, so you kind of totally pull, pulled the wool over my eyes there. So, um, wool, sweater, get it? <laughs> Bad, I know. Uh, so, um, do you have any pets? No, uh, we had a dog a number of years ago, and we swore we wouldn't have another. And of course, I would love to, but my husband says, "No, when he retires, he wants to do traveling, and he would worry about who's taking care of the pets." So uh, yeah, I just have to appreciate my grand dog. Fair enough. <laughs> and you have a grand dog, and what yes. kind of grand dog is he? Um, well, we, we're not sure. We think she might be part Rhodesian Ridgeback because she's kind of a big dog, and she um, she's a rescued dog. She was okay. actually in uh, foster care before they adopted her. Okay. And well, those are the best kind of dogs as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, rescue dogs. She's so. sweet, yeah. That's wonderful. And and I I ask this because I live vicariously through other people's pets, <laughs> so it's okay. I understand. Yeah. Um, so uh, have you ever heard of NAMI and the work that NAMI does? I did not know about NAMI until uh, Kara introduced me to that. And okay. I think this is a great organization. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, we would love to have you at um, at some of our meetings and, and gatherings and um, maybe even some of the classes. Okay. So um, it, go ahead. If I could say, um, in, we drove here together. <laughs> and in the car, we were talking about medication. Yes. And how people will take their medication for a while. And then they'll start to feel better. And then they will think, oh, I don't need medication anymore because I'm I'm feeling better uh, your thoughts yeah um, I know I know I had an uncle who was that way uh, he he had bipolar and he would tend to um, go off of his medication because he was feeling better um, I learned from that experience not to so I stay on my medication so what about you I stay on my medication. I have uh, two sisters who are also bipolar. And um, my brother is like me. We just get the lows, not the highs. And um, my sister, especially the older one, would get off of it. And then she can't figure out why everything is falling apart, why everything is wrong, because I was feeling good. I didn't need that. And so that's something that's so important is to stay on your medication. Yes. Even when you think that I'm all better, you have a chemical imbalance. And if you don't continue to take the medicine, that doesn't fix that. That's right. 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 Yes. Um, and there's, there's several ways for that chemical imba imbalance to, to be healed. Um, one of which is through medication, um, uh, also uh, proper diet, um, exercise, exercise. Very important. Um, yeah, those last two things I don't do very well, and so I need to work on that more. But the medication for me is working really well. So, um, what about you? What What are some of your favorite foods that that give you sort of an uplift or a boost? Hmm. Well, believe it or not, I love fruit. And Fair so um, that's, I can't eat a lot of it because that's not really good for the waistline. It has a lot of natural sugar in it. Yeah. But I also like to uh, walk. Okay. And sometimes when I'm frustrated and, and upset, if I can get out and walk, that helps blow away the cobwebs. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's excellent because walking helps. Um, first of all, it, it helps uh, release endorphins. Mm -hmm. And endorphins are sort of that feel-good thing, along with oxytocin, I believe. Is, oxytocin is, a, is, is the hugging. Is a hugging chemical. Uh, chemical yeah. <laughs> um, but they, they are both feel-good chemicals mm -hmm. in, in our bodies. Um, but, Good coping uh, skills. Yes. It, it's an excellent coping skill. And thank you for mentioning that. What are some other coping skills that you use? Um, I will go down to my, I call it the dungeon, where I have my, my craft area set up. Okay. And I will work on making cards. Excellent. And that always makes me feel good because then in the end I might have 
made, you know, one card or I may have made 10 cards, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how detailed I get with them. And then I have them ready to either give away or to use. So. Excellent. So <laughs> so I need to become a really good friend with you <laughs> so I can get some of your good cards. Speaking sure. from experience, Excellent. Les, um, I've known Leslie for a long time, and her cards are very nice. Awesome. Very detailed. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, that's th that sounds like a good uh, task or a good good challenge for the craft group. Um, mm. We might get you involved in the craft group. Okay. <laughs> so it wouldn't be the first group I worked with, so I could do that. I've done that at uh, elementary school when I worked there. Excellent. I would bring stuff in for classes to do. Um, not all, but just classes I worked in and. Uh, done it with sorority and so i'm used to that excellent <laughs> well we um we have a nami craft group that meets every wednesday mm -hmm. at uh six to eight i believe is that right six to eight or seven to nine I yeah don't... sometimes it, it changes because of of con conflicts with it Prior commitments. but it is at uh we meet at the um the panera bread that is on the south side of central from Wesley Hospital. Okay. And uh, you are by all means welcome to come. All right. And uh, I'm giving a shout out to the listeners. You also are welcome to come and, and enjoy uh, doing crafts with us because we, we enjoy uh, the challenge of crafts and it gets us out of our head. Yes, it does. So <laughs> we made um, wind chimes last week. Yes, we did. Wind chimes with um, with canning lids and, oh. and canning rings. That sounds like fun. It was. It made great, great canning lids and canning rings. Um, let's see here. What else can I throw at you? Go ahead. Oh, um, so. Well, not much to, to ask right now because we're coming short on time. But, uh, Kara, I am going to ask you to give us that number that is our, our uh, message line for NAMI. Um, uh, what is that number? That number is 316-686-1373. That's 316-686-1373. Excellent. And with that, I will say this is our own voice, and we are talking with Leslie, and we will be right back after this message. Our Own Voice is brought to you by NAMI. If you would like to learn more about the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the programs we offer, or get involved, please visit NAMI.org. Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and KSUN Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. To learn more about NAMI Wichita and how you can get involved with the mental health community, contact our message line at 316-686-1373 or email us at info at namiwichita.org. Leave a message and someone will get back to you as soon as possible. You can also visit our web and Facebook pages. Our website is www.namiwichita.org and our Facebook is facebook.com slash namiwichitaks. NAMI has lots of activities going on from our various classes to our various meetings. The first Tuesday of the month is our affiliate education meeting at 7 p.m., where we often have amazing guest speakers share with us happenings in mental health. On the third Tuesday of the month, we have Ask the Doctor Hour from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., followed by our support groups for those family members and persons with a lived experience with mental health. And on the fourth Tuesday, we meet at College Hill United Methodist Church 
for a care and share support group for those persons living with mental illness. The first and third Tuesday, our meetings are at 1010 North Main, the same location as Breakthrough Club and Episcopal Social Services. Again, if you would like to join us or learn more about NAMI Wichita, please contact our message line at 316-686-1373. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. And I would like to note again that we talk about mental health issues on this program. There may be some issues or words that may be troubling or triggering for our listeners, so please practice good self-care and use your own discretion when listening. So, um, we were talking on the way over here because we gave you a ride today. Yes. And uh, you mentioned something that I mentioned I had just seen in a meme which is absolutely wonderful. So I want you to go ahead and share that with us again. Okay, and I, when I saw this, I said, this is something I'm going to have to put on a, something and hang up on the wall. It says, never be a prisoner of your past. It was just a lesson, not a life sentence. Exactly. And unfortunately, a lot of us who suffer from mental illness think it is. A we, life sentence. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that it is not. It's just like, when you're really really down low and and you're trying to get up and you don't think you can and then you start to see the light you realize that okay i can get through this um i i'm i'm not going to be stuck here forever um and that i think that's the thing that upsets me the most is when people um think about killing themselves which was my, my oldest sister did that i was a teenager maybe okay. maybe 12 and we weren't allowed to talk about that and I think that was a mistake. Yeah. Um, because we could have understood more and she could have told us more. It was like a hidden secret. And that never helps, never helps. Uh, when, when you're that low, you need to talk to somebody. And exactly. And they'll get you to somebody else to talk to if they don't know how to help you. And um, so I don't want anybody to ever think that this is a prison sentence. It isn't. It's. It's something that you're going to get through, and the, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, and there are many lessons along the way, yes, yes. and we learn those lessons and move forward. Right. And you've made it this far, so you can make it even further. Exactly. That's the positive point that I have to say. So, yes. Um, so that, that phrase there is a wonderful phrase for words of hope, but I'm going to ask you some other words of hope that you can give our listeners. Okay. Um, what other words of hope can you give our listeners for what you have been through and, and, uh, and you survived? Um, I guess one of them would be faith. Um, I have a strong faith. Okay. Um, and I, I know this sounds funny, but I know that um, when you're really in a hole, many years ago, I, I was living in, New, in, New, in Nebraska, and I said, um, my girlfriend was talking to me I said okay I gotta I, I want you to understand what I'm what I'm dealing with right now I said I'm like a child who's afraid of the dark and I'm in the deepest darkest corner of a basement I want to come out but I don't know how to get out and I said sometimes it's it's somebody else has got to help pull you a little bit to get you out of that and then you realize okay there is light I just have to keep moving towards it um, because she she didn't understand depression. Yeah. And sometimes it is. You're in that dark corner and you don't know how to get out. Right. A lot of people don't understand depression. So my faith, though, has been a strong thing for me uh, to help me get through. But my family also. Okay. Um, and having a sister who tried to kill herself, um, I've s seen it happen with other people. The people who are left behind are so devastated that I realized that um, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't do that because I don't want to hurt them like that. And that's been a strong motivator for me to keep moving forward and not to let the hole swallow me. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the only way to explain it. You feel like you're in a hole. Don't let it swallow you. I'll reach out. I have to find something that will, I'll go visit my granddaughters. Excellent. And uh, that, that's a big help for me to see them. They smile. Hi, Grandma, you're here, you know. And that's, that's just a huge thing to help get you through. Or I'll call somebody and say, hey, let's go to lunch. 
mm-hmm. and we go to lunch. And then after that, it's like, okay, I'm all right. You know, so excellent. Got to do those things. So, okay. So how, how many granddaughters do you have? Three. You have three too. Okay. <laughs> so do I. I have three. Mine are three years old, 11 years old, and 14 years old. Oh, mine are older. Uh, one is almost 18. Oh, one is wonderful. almost 16. Wonderful. And one will be 13 this month. Excellent. So, okay. And she's, she's, um, they're all extremely different from one another. Uh-huh. And uh, the youngest one has got some health issues. She has uh, spina bifida and scoliosis. Okay. She just had scoliosis surgery. And um, so grandma can't take her to church right now because I can't pick her up. She can't bend or twist. Okay. But daddy brings her and we meet her at church and she helps hand out bulletins at church and she's so happy. And when I look at her on the day that I'm really down, I think, what am I complaining about? You know, she's got things so much harder to face in her life and she is always smiling, yeah. always happy. And so that gives me a lot of strength too. That is excellent. All right. Well, um, Let's see, what what other family can you talk about? Okay, um, I'm one of four siblings. Mm-hmm. All of us suffer from depression. Uh, two of us are in the middle, are just get the lows. The other two are the highs and the lows. And um, again, like I said before, if my older sister would stay on her medication, she'd be good, but then she didn't always do that. And most of uh, my younger life at home we spent rescuing Susan, my mother, spent all that time to try to help Susan uh, because she needed it. Uh, but the rest of us kind of got lost in the shuffle. And I think that's why my brother and I got closer because we were so much similar in how we dealt with things. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after I got married and left home, uh, my little sister went through what the older sister went through. Um, It's, it's not something I ever, um, my brother and I really didn't talk much about it until later in life that, uh, that he suffered from depression too. Uh, I never would have thought that, uh, but um, he developed a strong faith and that also helped him a great deal. Excellent. To not, to not give up. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I want to underscore that for, um, for men who deal with depression, oftentimes the, um, the sign or symptom that you see is they get angry very easily and, and very, they just go into a rage. Um, that, was, that was how my depression was. Um, I was raging at everything. Um, I dropped something on the floor. Oh no! You know, and I just I would fly into a rage over it. And and um, I finally went to the doctor and uh, talked to the doctor and broke down in tears. And yeah. Mm. So, what were you going to say, Kara? I was I was going to talk about um, how over the years. You know, I'm a millennial, if you want to call it that. Um, but I, I feel like uh, back then in, in the in the 70s, uh, uh, 80s, 60s, 50s, etc. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, mental health issues were not talked about. Nope. They no, were, they were not. Not um, discussed. So I'm kind of yeah. surprised when I hear. In in like fact, that. my. Uh, my grandmother, my mom's mother, um, she uh, apparently had a nervous breakdown, and um, and what information we got from that was that she, um, we 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 just were told, well, she had tuberculosis and she had to go into the hospital, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. Um, we went to visit her one time and there were all these other people there who were dealing with all sorts of mental health issues and it became an eye-opening experience we were told not the truth and my family too yeah Uh, a lot of times um like i said my sister tried to kill herself and we were not allowed to talk about it Hmm. but we also didn't talk about my dad who died when i was nine we weren't allowed. We didn't talk about dad either. Those were, and that was from the '60s, 
and um, even even when I was first had issues and was diagnosed with depression, I was not allowed to talk about it. My husband was like, "No, you're not talking about this." Yeah, exactly. So um, it it's. I don't know how to put it. We, we need to be more open about it because what we have found is that by talking about it, by, by sharing how you're feeling, by letting people know, um, number one, we reduce that stigma. Yep. Uh, number two, we, uh, we have a cathartic experience ourselves and it helps release some of the, um, some of the fear, the frustration that you feel. Yes, I agree. And so, um, so talking about it is so very important. Um, well, thank you so much, Leslie, for talking with us today. You're welcome. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, listeners, for being there to listen to us. Um, I want to say this is our own voice on Kaysen Community Radio. And uh, listen or join us for our next Our Own Voice program.